Hello, and thank you all for joining us today. I think we are ready to begin. Um, just a couple of housekeeping points to repeat before I hand over to David Brown. Everyone has been muted on entry, so please send any questions through to the Hayes WebEx host, and we will endeavor to answer them at the end of the presentation. And now, without further ado, I will hand it over to David Brown. All right, thank you very much, and thank you everyone for uh, joining me today. Welcome to our webinar on the career steps you need to take to become a senior leader in IT. If you have any questions, please send them in using the chat function, and I will answer them at the end of the presentation. So as previously mentioned, I'm David Brown. I'm the Executive Vice President for Veritas, a Hayes company here in the U.S. I've got 18 years of experience in the IT staffing business, and I've worked with IT professionals at all levels. In fact, some of the people I placed 10, 15 years ago are now working as CIOs, so I've been closely involved in helping guide people and develop their careers at all levels for a long period of time now. So where is today's information coming from? Uh, this year, we surveyed more than 100 CIOs, we interviewed more than 50 senior IT leaders, and we reviewed 100 CIO resumes to find out what it takes to become a CIO, what skills they have, and what traits they say are most important. Some of the things that we wanted to know were what qualifications do you need, how long does it take to become a manager, why they choose IT management, what their entry into management was, what were their biggest career challenges, and finally, what advice they would give to the next generation of IT leaders. There are lots of ways to succeed in this function and lots of ways to reach leadership, but we found the common threads that will help you drive your career further and faster. Or if, you've, or if you're already a senior leader, these will also help you develop your teams by knowing what traits to look for and how to help them identify and address areas for improvement. So what are the most challenging career obstacles that you'll face? More than a third said the leap from senior management to director was the toughest career step. That's really about becoming more than a functional leader, more than just a team leader, to becoming a business leader. There's a quote here as well from one of the CIOs we interviewed, Nate Thompson, who says it's always a challenge to position IT as a business partner and not just a service provider. That's a challenge that a lot of our CIOs commented on, so that's what we're focused on today. How can you move from a technical or tactical role to one as a strategic leader? I've called these career accelerators because if you can master all six of these, then you will find you can better direct your career. So what are these six career moves? Well, number one, you need to develop business knowledge at every stage of your career. Number two, invest in your people network. Be able to communicate with all stakeholders within a business. Continue to be curious and inquisitive about new technology. Work to be a strong people leader. And lastly, become a business leader, not just a technical manager. Let's go through these one at a time to give you some real tools and tactics you can use to drive your career. First of all, you need to develop business knowledge at every stage of your career. That means that if you're a software developer or a cybersecurity professional or a help desk analyst, you should be aware of what's happening around you and how te technology is helping to advance the business. The number one skill set the CIOs we surveyed say you need at mid to senior management levels are a strong understanding of business and how as a technologist you can provide solutions to help the business grow. And I love this quote from one of our respondents, Rajesh Nagarajan, who very simply said, that if you can't apply the technology, then what's the point? That point was echoed by a lot of IT leaders. You can't just use technology for the sake of technology. It has to be contributing to the business, and if you don't know the business, then you won't be able to recognize where technology is contributing to results or where you need to make improvements. So how do you develop these skills? First, know your organization and industry. Understand how your company makes money, what its biggest challenges are, who the competitors are. Read your company press releases and reports. Keep up with the quarterly results. 
It's about taking a genuine interest in what your company does. Going hand in hand with this is doing research beyond just your company and industry, but read blogs that talk about technology and business. Understand the wider space you're operating in. Who are your customers? What problems are they trying to solve? And how does your company help them? Once you've got that base level, which is mostly self-taught, that's when I talk to your manager. Tell them you want to talk more about the company and how decisions are made. They will be able to help find opportunities for you to get that experience, whether it's helping you find a business mentor, letting you sit on meetings, or giving you the opportunity to job shadow for a day in another department, such as finance, sales, or operations. These will help you connect the dots between your daily activity and the company's overall business and performance. Another area to consider is engaging in more formal business education. For example, about a quarter of the CIOs we interviewed have their MBA, others have PMP or Six Sigma certifications, some have business degrees not even in CIS. There isn't one right answer. There are a lot of resources out there. How you go about it can be individualized, but you must make sure that you take the time to focus on developing your business knowledge. The better you understand the business, the more you'll be able to drive business results with technology solutions, and that's how you'll stand out get noticed, and progress to the next stage of your career. The next thing you do need to do to drive your career is invest consistently in your people network. 78% of CIOs say networking is very important to their role, and 75% network at least quarterly. These connections are important at every career stage because that's how you'll find your next job or project, how you'll find mentors, how you'll develop an understanding of the tech issues that you haven't faced yet. So how do you go about increasing your network? One of the biggest mistakes that I see people make, especially early in their career, is to focus exclusively on external networks, meaning people outside of your organization. Those are very important, but the reality is that your internal network is just as important, if not more important. Internal networks are important for career progression and developing business knowledge. External networks are important for finding new ideas and new opportunities. Be curious about other departments within your business. Ask questions. How does it relate to what you're doing today? How could you, how could you function to improve the process? The more you want to know, the more you'll naturally reach out. From an external standpoint, I'd recommend attending both tech events and business events. The tech events will give insight into the latest developments and what some of the cutting edge companies are doing, but you may find that the industry events are actually more relevant. So if you work for a healthcare company, for example, attend a healthcare industry event. There will almost certainly be people who are having tech related talks and the people you meet will be facing a lot of the same challenges you're facing. So you'll, you will potentially find ideas that could apply immediately to your company. Finally, your recruiter has a different viewpoint of the industry and function that's useful for you as well. They know what other companies are doing, what they're paying, what skills are in demand. They can be a network hub for you, connecting you to the right people in your region or sector. Even if you're not job hunting, checking in with them regularly will help keep your finger on the pulse so that when you are ready to make a move, you know what's, what's sought after in the market and they know what kind of role you're looking for. Being able to communicate technical ideas with non-technical people is critical to advancing your career. Really, communication is very important no matter what, but this particular skill will serve you in every situation. According to our survey respondents, communication is the second most important skill for CIOs, just behind people management. We also asked the CIOs we interviewed what soft skills were important, and more than half highlighted communication with most specifying the ability to be a bridge between the technical teams and the business. If non-technical people don't understand your work, they won't buy in, which limits your ability to achieve. So how do you do this? Well, the first thing I'd say is it builds on the first two points. If you're curious about other functions and you talk to people in those functions and ask questions, then you'll hear how they communicate with you and that informs you how to talk to them. 
That's why I said here you need to listen as much as you talk. The main struggle I find is that technical professionals don't know what to talk to non-technical people about. But if you listen, ask questions, and understand their role and their pain points, then it will become second nature how to communicate with them. So the better you understand the business, again, the easier it will be to talk to them. Building on this, presentation skills can also be very important as you reach senior levels of management. As you progress, you will need to be able to present to a group of varying size and technical knowledge to outline business objectives and plans and to win people over to your suggestions. Again, talk to your manager about finding internal opportunities for this, but you might also consider getting practice by presenting to associations, industry groups, or educational institutions. And if public speaking is a challenge for you, there are lots of resources available out there in every city. It's obvious that you need to keep up with new technology and developments. That's part of every leadership role, but it's especially important for IT. But what does that mean in practice, and how can you keep up with everything? Curiosity is a tool. If you can stay in touch with that curiosity, then you'll want to know more, read more, and it will inspire you to keep learning. Continual learning was mentioned by a lot of CIOs in their interviews, and 83% of those surveyed said professional development is important to their careers. We also know that 50% have postgraduate level education, which means it's likely that at some point, at least many of them went back to school after starting their careers. So on the topic of staying curious, I say think about why you got into IT in the first place. What drew you to this area? What are you passionate about? Reconnect with that to find your curiosity again. Allow yourself to read something that interests you, even if it doesn't directly relate to your role. It's easy to get bogged down in what has to happen today, but if you can take 10 minutes a day to read about a new technology or think about what problem you would solve if budget and time wasn't an issue, then you'll find ideas and inspiration that will help improve your long-term planning and probably reconnect you with today's tasks as well. Lots of the CIOs follow thought leaders on social media, subscribe to blogs, or read a business or technology book every month. There are lots of newsletters and content streams out there that make it easy for you to find new ideas and information. Finally, be open-minded about new technology, but maintain that critical eye of whether it's applicable to your company. There's a difference between something that's interesting and cool and something that's important and relevant to your business. People leadership is important for any career path, but can be especially challenging to develop those skills in IT because you can advance pretty far while staying as an individual contributor or mainly technical. The number one soft skill CIO say is necessary for success is leadership and people management. You can't succeed without a great team, and you can't get a great team without knowing how to lead and motivate them. So how do you do that? Firstly, I'd reiterate one from our earlier points about business development, which is to get your manager on your side. They've got lots of tools that they can use to help you with, whether it's helping you become a mentor, offering stretch assignments with some team leadership, or specific internal training that's available. The best way to learn these skills is practice and feedback. Then you can apply that feedback to your next challenge and drive continual improvement. I highly recommend finding a mentor who can help you with the finer points of people management. 85% of IT leaders had a mentor at some point in their career, and 87% have been a mentor. This is an extremely important career tool. And finally, there's a lot of information out there about leadership best practices. Figure out what your leadership style is, read the top books on people management, subscribe to blogs, blogs about leading people. The more time and energy you put into this, the better your team will perform and develop, which will drive results for your function in your company and ultimately for your career. Finally, what, what does all of this mean? It's all about becoming a strategic driver of the business as opposed to a support arm. The top skill CIOs need in their role is strategic planning. 
And I'd say the difference between a senior manager and executive leader is whether you're involved in developing strategy beyond your team or function. Are you responding to company requests or are you proactively making suggestions to drive results? How can you make a name for yourself and impact the business? Well, you need to understand the business and how IT can drive business results, not just how it can enable current business activity. What are your company's biggest challenges and goals, and how can technology contribute to solve them? At the end of the day, this is about either helping the company make money or helping the company save money. What can you do to make the business operate better, faster, and more efficiently? How can you break down silos so the tech team is aligned with finance, aligned with sales, and aligned with operations? Really, a CIO is a business person with a tech background, not just the top tech person in the company. So you need to switch your thinking to take a bird's eye view of the future of your company and be proactive about finding tech solutions that will improve that outlook. You are the innovation driver of your company, and if you can succeed in that role, then it doesn't matter how technology changes, your company will have the agility to adapt as needed. So some actions you can take today. I wanted to take this down into specific things that you can do today and every day to keep developing and moving forward. Number one, focus beyond daily tasks. One thing all the CIOs have in common is that they were always thinking bigger. What can you do today that will impact your role, your team, or your company? It's easy to get bogged down in the day-to-day, -day, and you need to be able to look and act beyond those task-based concerns. Number two, tell your manager what you want and ask for their support. Whether it's management practice, presentation experience, job shadowing, mentoring, your first stop is your direct manager to find out how your employer will help you. If your manager can't or won't help you, then I suggest you call us because if your employer doesn't have the capacity to support your career development, then you're going to be stagnant as long as you're there. Number three, reach out to a new connection. Look at your network and your knowledge base and think about what's missing. You can send an email today to try to fix it. That could be internal, email someone in operations or sales or a business analyst or a project manager. Ask them about their job. Who will use your solutions and why? Understanding that is a critical piece. Or externally, is there a blogger you're a fan of or a technology you want to know more about? Talk to an expert. People generally like to answer intelligent, thoughtful questions about their passions. Also consider finding a mentor or joining an association or user group. Whichever you choose, take a step today towards connecting with more relevant people. And finally, keep looking forward. What's your next challenge? Be proactive about planning ahead. What does your manager do that you don't do? How can you practice that skill? What's next in technology? New solutions, new languages, new applications. Know what's coming up and how it applies to your role, to your business, to your company, to the industry that you work in. So that finally, this has interested you. I think you'd appreciate our DNA of a CIO report, which launches this week. We've outlined the most common career paths, education, skills, traits, as well as advice from over 50 senior IT leaders. The link is on the page where you can request a copy or you can ask your recruiter or account manager about this guide. So that being said, that's all I had for the webinar portion of this. Um, I'd like to open it up for any questions, if there are any, uh, while we're all together. And again, please use the chat function to send any questions in. Okay, first question I got, how much does age versus experience have to do with progression? It seems that uh, youth is a detriment to my progression, even if my experience is reasonably good and I actively practice in most of these areas. You know, it's, that's 
a, a great question, and that's something that probably every company values differently. I will tell you that some companies do value years of experience in, in working um, in certain skill areas or certain amount of years of experience in managing people. But others, it's more about the specific technical knowledge that you may have or industry experience. So there's there's no one right answer for that when it's probably something that I would say just depends on each and every company that you talk to. Um, how do you get a seat at the table when your company does not have a CIO, CTO, and all of IT is under the COO or the CFO? I, I hear this question a lot, especially in small and medium-sized companies. Great, great question. Um, I would say that it, in most companies there is a senior IT manager. Maybe they're not at the C level, but someone who's responsible for the overall IT business. That's the person that I would go to and express the desires for your career, for your learning, for the things that you want to do that we discussed earlier today, and use them as the person that that uh, can springboard you in your current company. The, the, the other side of that answer is, is that, when honestly, some companies are not particularly invested in IT as a business partner. Um, that may be the case in the company that you're working for or that you've worked for in the past. And if that is the case and you're interested in a career and becoming a business partner, um, uh, an IT business partner with the, the core business, then maybe it's time to look for another uh, position for a with a company that values that more. Um, how much will an MBA degree help in Excel? Can professional degrees like PMP, et cetera, substitute for MBA degrees? Absolutely. Absolutely. An MBA is not the one and only answer. Uh, in fact, of the, the people that we surveyed, I think only half had an, an MBA. So. Um, any type of certification, continuing education and learning, it may be something that is specific to your industry and not even technical. Um, so it's not as much about one specific type of continuing education as that you're doing it. Got a, actually a couple of questions on the MBA one. So uh, yeah, and again, I would just reiterate that is absolutely not a requirement to reach the senior levels of management. see are there any other questions coming through okay I have one more question here uh, that I got about what what kind of role should I look for and how can I find something that will have the progression that I'm looking to achieve uh, in my IT career there is no one answer to that. Um, I would say that generally, if you're on a technical path, if you're a developer, uh, if you're in you know, network security or anything that's in the highly specialized technical field, it's about understanding the business, getting involved with the project managers, the business analysts, the functional managers, the customers that you're supporting, as we mentioned earlier in the, the, the slide deck, um, why am I coding this? What business function is this achieving? What is it that you're looking to, to improve in the core business once this application is delivered? Asking those questions and, and getting exposed to different parts of the business is probably the key factor early on. Um, and conversely, if you're a project manager or a business analyst, it's understanding the technical part and reaching over the aisle and spending time with developers and ask them how they go about solving that problem, not just when did you get it done or I need it done by X date or here are the things that we need to do. So again, I think it's about that, that cross-functional experience is absolutely critical. We have uh, in our respondent base, we have people that came up through the project management, more functional side of the house. We have people that came up from the more technical side of the house. So there, there is no one path to success, but I would say that what all of them have in common is whatever area their strength is in, they spent a significant amount of time 
with the other side of the technology house and understanding how it works and building relationships and forming that into how they manage the business. Okay, it looks like we had a couple more uh, uh, questions come in. Uh, a couple actually exactly on that topic that we just discussed. Um, how can we convince business leaders that we're not just a cost center uh, rather than a profit center? You know, I, I, I hear that uh, objection a lot of times from IT organization or IT executives. And, you know, my first response to that is, that to take responsibility for ourselves as technology people to provide a reason why that business unit should think of us as a profit center and not just a cost center. So not to sound like a broken record, but understanding the business and coming with some ideas or solutions and how we can make this better. I think this has improved dramatically over the past five years or so. Uh, with the, the push towards analytics and big data and companies realizing that while we're actually sitting on uh, a powder keg of information here that if we could harness this, we can drive productivity and sales better. So I'd say this was a bigger problem five or ten years ago than it is today, but it's still an issue that exists. So as a senior leader in the IT business, I would recommend going to the business, again, to understand the challenges and obstacles that they face and then turning around and coming to them, not with a, a final solution that's gonna solve all of their problems, but with some ideas of, hey, I think that if we took the, the information that we, we have, or if we took this subset of data, or if we were able to improve efficiency here, I think that we could drive um, uh, more productivity out of your sales teams or your operational teams. That's what gets the ear of the business side of the house. So I'd recommend instead of waiting for them to come up with that idea on their own, you go to them with solutions. So I think, um, looking through the questions here, um, I think we've pr pretty much hit on all of these topics. Um, Let's see, yeah, I, I'm getting several questions here just about type of uh, experience that's necessary, um, uh, specific types of degrees. Again, I think our respondent base would show, and I, you know, again, you know, highly encourage everyone to download the report and you'll see, but that our, our respondents come from all walks of life, some with postgraduate degrees, some without, some with certification, some are business degrees, some are um, CIS degrees, uh, some have gone more with the technical certifications. There's, there is no, there, there isn't, the, the common thread is that they all have invested in uh, education once their career has started, but what that looks like is really a diff is very different across the board. So um, I think, just looking through these here, uh, we have hit on all of those topics. And the other, the other main theme that I see is one that we've talked about a couple of times here is how, how, do, I, how do I get a seat at the table? How, how do I convince the business that IT is important and can help them? And, and I think we've hit that one. Number one, some companies just don't invest in technology and they don't see uh, the importance of it. I think at this point that's pretty much reserved to certain industries and, and certainly certain sizes of, of companies. Um, so it, that's not something that you necessarily are going to have control over. If there's not a high thirst to involve IT in the business, then maybe it's time to just look at another, you know, another career. But the other side of it being, as we discussed earlier, Get, gather those ideas, um, talk to the business, understand the challenges that they face, and come to them with how technology can solve their, help solve uh, some of their problems, and, and that will always get everyone's ear. So, okay. 
Well, I, I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you very much for all the information. Again, highly encourage you to download the report. It's coming out this week. Um, a lot of additional information there, a lot more detail than what we talked about today. I appreciate everyone spending part of their lunch uh, hour with me, and everyone have a great day. Thank you.